question. Let, let me te- let me just answer this with an, uh, a statement and a question. When you say I don't blame Obama, when w- after the surge worked, the violence was down to pre-war levels. As a matter of fact, it had never been less violence than before the war broke out. The Iraqis, all they needed at that point was our intelligence, our training, and, and if we would have st- stood our ground with those simple things, we'd never be in the situation where we are today. And I'm not the only p- person saying this. The people on the ground in Iraq are all saying the same thing, that the only the only way, by leaving the Iraqis hanging the way President Obama did, it opened the door where all of these groups could reorganize without without any ramifications because the Iraqis didn't have the intelligence capability to stop them. Yeah, I think there's a lot of reasons why, you know, these radical Sunni groups that are associated with al-Qaeda, this ISIS group, why they've become stronger. But one of the reasons they're stronger is that we have been allied with them in Syria. We've been funding Islamic rebels who kill Christians. We've been funding Islamic rebels to fight against Iranian proxies in Syria. But now we're on the other side of the world. We would be siding with the Iranian Guard. If we were actually put troops in, they'd be fighting. No, I'm not saying that at all. And I'm I'm not saying that what the president's offering right now with 300, you know, troops there offering some type of assistance at this late date. Uh, what, what you see, what happened is we had the situation under control. We had an emerging democracy, an ally of the United States, imperfect as it is, better than it was. And what happened is the president, because we politicized war and the very same Democrats, if you go back, I've got the tape and I did a whole monologue on TV about this with the tape to, to back this up. Every Democrat was saying that that Saddam Hussein was a threat to the world, had weapons of mass destruction. We saw pictures of kids and women laying in the street, the Kurds in the north, because he gassed them. Um, and and so well, every, and, think, and they all voted well, for the gonna... resolution of the use of force. But then when things got tough, they all wanted to pull out. They politicized it. And that became uh, Barack Obama's calling card. And by leaving early, we've basically given up all those gains that we had made, hard, hard fought for gains. But I think also we we shouldn't always say that it is just our fault or any one person's fault over here. For example, the person most culpable in all of this is Maliki. He he kicked all the Sunnis out of his army. He made his government a Shiite government, a Shiite army. And so you had Shiites in a city of Mosul, which was uh, predominantly Sunni, and they ran when the war came. And so really, Maliki deserves a lot of blame. I'm not disagreeing on Maliki, but here's but here's the issue: Had the president not pulled out because he ran once Democrat politicize a war. We cannot win a war. And I'll tell you this, Senator, we ought not be fighting wars that we're not in to win. Because by pulling out early, all the gains of 4,000 Americans that died there and gave their limbs there is now, as you look at the map of Iraq, city after city that they fought so hard for has now toppled. That's that's Obama's fault. That's not Dick Cheney's fault. One of the things that Reagan talked a lot about and Weinberger, his Secretary of Defense, did in their doctrine on war was that war is the last resort, but when we fight war, we have a consensus of the American people. We go in to win. We don't limit ourselves. We don't restrict our soldiers and tie their arms behind the back as far as how they fight. But there is a question, though, and it is a big question. I'm not saying it's an easy answer, and that's uh, could we have stopped uh, this this outbreak of ISIS? Yeah, but how many troops would it have required? Fifty, hundred thousand? No, I would I would argue it would have required our intelligence, and it would have required our political pressure on Maliki for the very reason that you're pointing out that he should have had a coalition government, and it would have been the training of their troops, not ours. And that's well, we, and that's I, the situation we were in. Before Obama pulled them all out. Well, I would give you one possible scenario, though, and we don't know. Nobody knows alternate scenarios, but here's a possible scenario. Let's say we had left 10,000 troops, and they were divided around the country, and Mosul had about 1,000, and ours had been overrun by this uprising. Then where would we be? We would be back in the middle of a war right now. Can we subdue them? Did the surge work? Absolutely the surge worked. Do we have the political and the military might to subdue this again? Yeah, 50,000, 100,000 troops, we can do it. But I guess my point, and this is where I feel very strong, about this. I have three teenage boys. But, but, but I think we're talking, Shiites, about, we're, we're talking about we're talking about two different things here. I'm saying that we should have provided if the Shiites won't fight for Mosul, I'm not sending my son and I just feel really strongly about I don't that. Think-